Homelessness 2.0, day 14. I got me a mug of Coke. I got me some poor man's food. You know, the bacon and chicken and elbow macaroni that all pretty much runs for like anywhere between something like a you know a buck or two tops for each serving. Okay, I forgot my hoods up. A little butter, whole things like maybe five bucks. It'll be filling all day, and of course, I love that music. I got to had to reacquire the series. I don't know why I would have even deleted it from my computer. It doesn't make any sense. But uh, that mistake should hopefully not happen again. And uh, watched the fellowship yesterday. I've realized that I have to kind of only watch the fellowship on one day. I can't watch all three as much as I'd like to because I get too emotional during that movie. Um, I don't know why. I mean, that's kind of the nature of emotions. They are often just a way of, you know, like emotions are like a fart. They happen, they build up over time, and then you just let them out. Now you might say, well, I understand why I'm farting. Because it ate too many beans or whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's certain biological processes that are associated with... Maybe that's why we understand farts better. Maybe we don't understand emotions enough. Because we haven't really looked into the biomechanical processes of it all. I don't know. I know that me having grown up where I grew up in Texas and being a 40-year-old man at... Uh, in 2021, having been shunned from being, from even emoting in so many ways, whether it was directed or implied in some way, I'm glad that that is changing for the most part. I'm glad that quote unquote woke culture is just frustrating people that I used to align with, that I used to live with, that thought the way that I was raised to think. Um, because we need it. We as a society need to heal. Because we have been harming ourselves for so long. Which is one of the reasons why, even now, more than 20 years after it started, I still, to this day, hate being alive. I always, every day, say to myself, in some capacity or another, I wish I were dead. You know, it's why I went to jail in the first place, because I wanted to die. Um, sure, I did it, I went about it the wrong way. Um, and so I won't. Even if I do get absurdly drunk, I won't be doing something like that anymore. But I'll probably find some other way. Because that's just how it is. But in the meantime, you know, I'll do what I can to find enjoyment. While also, you know, constantly struggling emotionally and financially and physically. You know, just after having been sick and still not feeling great, you know, yesterday was kind of one of those things where it's like, I don't feel as bad as I did, but I also didn't feel good. Um, which is why yesterday I stuck around the house and today I'm doing the same. I'm not doing anything responsible for the most part. Because it just, it, it isn't the way to go about it. When you're sick. <laughs> And if I'd been employed and then needed to go to work on those days, I'd have been like, sorry, it's not happening, you know. Um, and if that job is like, well, you're too new of an employee, you don't get any sick days. I'm like, well, I'm still sick, so I'm not coming in. Like, I think we need to do that from now on. It doesn't matter if you have sick days or not. You don't go to work, period. You tell them, I'm not coming into work because I'm not going to make people sick. You might be like, well, I need the money. 
they need to pay you more. Straight up. Tell them to pay you more. Um, or don't get the job. Get a job that pays you more. Get a job that, you know, understands that the people working there are humans. And <laughs> humans are flawed and cannot be assumed to be robots because otherwise they should just create the robots go ahead do it come on hurry up you know destroy the concept of of labor in this country please i'm begging you please do it if you have the capacity to replace as many workers as possible with automation for the love of god do it start at the top though those are the most expensive people. Um, and, uh, you know, that's why I'm like, I, st I still have food. I don't need to go to the grocery store to get food. I go to the grocery store for other things that are related to my desires around food, whether it's to eat healthier or if it's to have some more eggnog and some milk or whatever. You know, those things are, for all intents and purposes, luxuries for me. Eating healthy is a luxury. Drinking milk is a luxury for me. Because, one, I mean, milk's heavy. You know, the other day when I went to the grocery store, what, when I didn't, what I didn't say about that trip was that when coming back on the bus... When I tried to, you know, have the stop request uh, wire pulled, it didn't work from where I was sitting because we have a poorly funded public transit system that, you know, needs actual more money pumped into it. And thank you, the Cokes, although not so much the Koch brothers because one of them's dead. They like to, um, they like to lobby really hard against public transit. <laughs> We don't live in a country that is walkable, that is bikeable. Um, and I know this is sort of me rehashing some stuff from the other day, but it's like that's that's kind of the issue that I have run up against is that I know that my the next chapter of my life is going to require a car, no matter how much I don't want it to. And I'm, I'm wondering, like, should I still stay in California? Um, I definitely don't want to move back to Texas. Because the, the, the things that I want from California don't exist in a lot of places in Texas. One of them being diversity. Like, yeah, if you go to a major city, you're going to have a little bit more diversity. But nothing like out here. Like, it was something of a culture shock when I came out here. And that's one of the reasons why I'm glad I've stuck around out here. You know, so many things about who I am as a person have changed so drastically since I left Texas. I was thinking about emotions and, and you know, woke culture and sexuality and, and so many other things that this conservative mindset holds. Like, I even started thinking about, I, w I, was, I was browsing Reddit, which I don't really do these days. And I was in the conservative subreddit. And I was looking at some of the top posts, and then I went over to the liberal subreddit, and I was looking at some of their top posts, and how similar and or contrarian they are, and what they talk about, and all this. And I got to, like, Rick Santorum, and him being homophobic, and... Him using some of these like weird outlandish ideas of, of what, like a tip, you know, what a, a, a conservative or Christian marriage is supposed to be. And I was like, why does a person think like that? And then I started thinking about my own past and thinking about the changes that have happened. 20 years ago, I would have never out loud in any format, be it text or otherwise, said something like, Ryan Reynolds is attractive. Never would have said it. But now I know for a fact that man is absolutely stunningly attractive. Does that make me gay? Why is that the first thought? Because that's what the first thought was. 
I was afraid of being gay. Why would I be afraid of being gay? Why should anyone be afraid of being gay? Well, a lot of people have legitimate reasons, unfortunately, because there are people around them who will not accept them, who will hate them, who will disown them, who will try to harm them over that. They will publicly shame you. I was in a bar at one point. I said something that, I don't know, it probably had something to do with prostate and sex and, you know, how a prostate feels good. And most guys want something like that. I don't remember exactly what it was. And this girl that I was really attracted to at the time shouted, shouted, What are you, gay? I'm like, no, I'm not. But now I'm not attracted to you anymore. I didn't say that to her. And there have been experiences that I've had with people of all shapes and colors. And and, and it's like, it, it, it fucks with my brain. But here's the thing about me that I didn't know about me for a long time. I will always challenge the status quo. Always. It it is in my nature to do that. I look at the world and I try to find the middle truth to as many things as possible. I try to find as much evidence on one side or the other as I can. I even look at dissenting opinions, although it doesn't happen immediately. But there will be times where I find myself arguing with people that I am like-minded with about something. And then I'll be like, wait a minute, hold on. To what degree am I arguing? Why am I arguing? Let's go to the other side. Let's get out of this echo chamber, go to this echo chamber, and start having conversations there, which is exactly what I did in the last day in the conservative subreddit, and I have been subsequently banned from it. Because I don't hold whatever their opinion of conservatism is. I'm more of a left-leaning centrist person because there are aspects of the left side that I like, and there are aspects of the right side that I like. I want fewer abortions overall. I want fewer guns overall. I think both of them should be allowed in certain circumstances. How weird is that? Isn't that contradictory? Well, only if you hold that it's an all or none kind of thing. If we had a better sexual education experience in this country... There'd be fewer abortions anyway. It's not up to me or you or anybody else whether or not a woman has an abortion. God doesn't exist from all I understand. I mean, in a way he does, but this is, that's a whole different conversation. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. I understand God exists. The reason why I understand God exists is because people's belief in God create such an insurmountable influence on the world that that influence that I see, that I label, that I label as God. That's it. I don't see it having anything to do with any specific religion or any specific deity with any specific name. It's some of that to me. And you can have your own relationship with God. I don't care. If you start trying to control other people for their behavior, if you try to start telling people you can't do this or you have to do this, you can't do this, Or we can't do... I mean, whatever. If you try to control other people's behaviors through your religion, then no, fuck you. That's the quick and ugly. And one of the things that I've seen is this almost religious dogmatism of certain people in certain settings, in a conservative setting. Like, the reason I got banned is because I didn't like, kiss Donald Trump's ass. Like, I'm sorry, he's a piece of shit human. Nobody should have voted for him. He shouldn't have even been on the ticket. A person like that should not be allowed to be 
considered for president, let alone be president. I don't like Joe Biden overall. He's better. He's a better option. I like some of the things that have happened. I don't like some of the things that have happened. But I also know that it's not a perfect system. You know, politics, as it is, is law. It's policy. You may not like the fact that an AR-15 is classified in some precincts as an assault weapon. Well, what defines assault weapon? Is it just the Oxford English Dictionary? Is it just dictionary.com? What's the other one? I can't remember. Fuck. Um, Webster's. Webster's and Oxford are like the two. But you see, they would have subsequent categories. They would have the one word or phrase that matters, and then they would have pieces. If you want a real example of that, go look up the definition for run. You're going to have at least a page, hands down. The way I know that is because that was the, one of the words that I always looked up in the, in, in the dictionary. I would read the dictionary for fun as a child. And when I see that I can't hold conservative values while also questioning other conservative values, and I am, ironically, removed from participating in a subreddit that somehow, above all, wants free speech... I mean, that, there's the irony right there. But getting kind of back to the whole of this thing and why I'm even talking about it in the first place is that much of my experience in California has challenged the way that I thought. I held really strongly onto a lot of beliefs that I no longer hold on to. It's not because of some propaganda or anything like that. I'm a I'm an intelligent, free-thinking person. I am somebody who, more than anything, there's two main kinds of content that I watch on YouTube, if this is an indicator that one likes to, to measure by. Two kinds. One, science videos. Two, cooking videos. There's a, a smattering of other stuff in there, but for the most part, those are the two main kinds of content that I watch. And both of those are based in science. I mean, cooking is chemistry. A bit of physics sometimes. Um, and, you know, obviously there's certain people that I watch cooking for one reason or another, but and I'm not watching the cooking channels for the science. But I don't watch, like, news generally. I don't subscribe to news channels. Like, I'll watch some Daily Show every now and then because I think of the nighttime, more left-leaning night shows, I prefer them the most. I like Trevor Noah. He's great. And I... I try to avoid digging myself into an emotional echo chamber because that is a big problem. It still happens, of course, because everybody wants to be around people who are like-minded. But the one thing that I miss the most regarding all of this and why I still want to stay in California despite how difficult it will be and probably impossible. I gotta admit, being in college has been the best part about it all. Being around younger people, different ideas that challenge the way that I think, that allow me to challenge them and their thinking. To paraphrase of a friend of mine who I haven't talked to in a while, her words, but 
she stated that, and this was in a private message on Facebook at one point, and I'm not sure exactly what it was associated with. But she stated that when I debate, me, Justin, when I debate, I don't try to win. And I thought that was interesting. It should, you know, that I don't ever try to insult anybody. I don't invalidate in any way what they're trying to say. But I will challenge them. And I appreciated that information. It's really stuck with me. It will always stick with me. Vanessa. I'm not going to say your last name. You don't even know this exists. The people who may have watched this probably don't know you exist. It doesn't matter. But I really appreciated that. Because it has stuck with me ever since. And I kind of wish I could monetize that somehow. Because then maybe I wouldn't have to struggle so damn much. But nevertheless, it's one of the many reasons why I want to stay. But I don't know how to stay in a way that is financially responsible. Because I don't know what I have to offer with regards to earning money. Besides just getting some crummy low-end, low-paying job that's not going to be able to pay me enough. We'll see, but I don't expect anything good. But that's also me. I never expect anything good. And... Probably part of it is challenging the status quo. I don't just go with the flow. And that makes my life harder. But it also makes it more fulfilling sometimes. In certain circumstances, you know, growing as a person is fulfilling. I'm not the same fearful, homophobic, racist person that I was. I understand those behaviors. It even got me thinking about the whole post-George Floyd thing and People asking black people certain questions like that, that's it. I didn't understand why I didn't feel right until I saw another video basically explaining that's not what you're supposed to do because that's always what happens every time some black person is killed. And I'm sorry if that sounded bad or racist, that's not what I wanted to say, or at least I, I don't want it to sound bad because it's not what my intention is. When somebody of the black community is killed publicly. The last thing that the black community needs is a bunch of fucking white people asking them questions about it. So I'm willing to take on a different challenge. You can ask me questions. The black community can ask me questions. I'm not saying that I'm special, that I know the answers, but I think that's a better alternative. That the black community asking a white man questions Questions that will challenge his thinking, challenge his knowledge and ignorance. Make him think, make him ponder what the black community may be thinking about. I think that's a better route. And this will get lost in the myriad BS ramblings that this video is. Um, but I think that... As long as we continue to challenge the status quo, we will hopefully find and create a better future. Have fun.